In this video, we're gonna break down the biomechanics and the anatomy involved in the spinning sidekick. I think at this point, we've all seen Eddie Bravo hyping up Joe Rogan in an old video, showing off his kicking power. That's a serious goddamn kick. So there's gonna be two points of analysis here. The first is gonna be a breakdown of the spinning sidekick from the side view. And the second's gonna be from the front view to give us a different angle. All right, so the first video, as promised, is from the side view, and then we'll move over to the front view in a little bit. So. To start this kick here, Joe pushes off of his back legs. Again, this is a very common theme, starts power generation from the ground. Uh, but the front leg, I want you to watch closely here. You'll be able to see it in the other angle a little bit better. It performs a motion called internal rotation. And the reason that he does this is actually opposite of what happens in whenever I broke down the roundhouse kick. The roundhouse kick, we actually externally rotate our hip to give us room to rotate forward. If we're gonna rotate behind us, it behooves us to take our foot and turn it inwards in our knee. So notice that his knee is turning inwards here to allow him some space at the hip to spin about the hip, okay? So whenever we move up higher, we see that he is rotating about the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine as well, but this is happening as a result mainly of how he's using his arms. So he's horizontally abducting the right arm as he's horizontally adducting the left arm. So with the left arm horizontal adduction like we've seen with the punches with Ryan Garcia breakdown and the Alex Pereira breakdown are happening mainly with muscles like the pec major, uh, the anterior delt to bring the arm across the body. And then the other arm, the right arm, the posterior delt and muscles like the shoulder, the medial shoulder muscles like the rhomboids in the middle trap are helping retract that shoulder blade to help even more with the thoracic rotation that's happening with that horizontal abduction, okay? So whenever he brings his arm forward, left arm forward and his right arm back, he's really starting to generate a lot of torque about that left leg. And then he starts to flex his hip to prepare to extend it whenever he turns all the way around. Okay, so hip flexion occurs there, and then as soon, even the, just the next little bit, bam. So while his hip is abducted, with muscles like the glute meat and the TFL, the tensile fasciolata, this co-contraction is where all the, a lot of the power comes from. His center of mass is already moving forward, but most of the power is coming from this co-contraction between the glute, the glute max particularly, uh, and the quad to extend the hip and the knee really forcefully at the same time. And he makes contact, and like any good strikers, they follow through. And as he follows through to get a little bit more extension, he actually crunches down into right trunk rotation. Uh, and his, where a lot of the stability comes from from this kick, uh, just so you don't get kind of knocked off balance, is the eccentric contraction or the eccentric elongation of the hamstrings and the adductors. So he's actually performing uh, eccentric. This is actually an anterior pelvic tilt happening, but as he comes forward, his hip his anterior pelvic tilt whenever he's extending his spine uh, and the, the pubic bone that the adductor attaches to is actually moving away from its attachment down here uh, a little bit distal to the knee. So both of them are elongating while they're creating force to stabilize the leg, okay? So we'll come all the way back. Internal rotation at the front hip as his body moves forward. You've got some lumbopelvic rotation, but mainly uh, thoracic rotation happening as a result of his arms and his, or his arms creating that rotational torque through horizontal ab and adduction, flexing the hip to come up and abducting and extending the hip while he extends the knee for that power. And then the eccentric, or excuse me, the, the right trunk is crunching down to create a little bit more reach. And then the eccentric stability from his hamstrings and his adductors. All right, so we're gonna play it all the way through. Just a ton of power here. Well, okay, now we're gonna move on to the front view. Okay, so the front view, you're gonna actually be able to see this hip internal rotation a little bit better. Okay, so as just, and, and in order to see this, I want you to watch the knee. Okay, so you're gonna see the knee turn inward to allow for that rotation to happen. So we move forward here. Whoops, boom. So his knee turned in, gives us room, and face is certainly ready. Jesus Christ, Joe, put on another face, man. Okay, and then he swings his arms around. He doesn't quite finish the arm swing like he did in the other view. Uh, and this one is actually a little bit more of kind of kicking behind him, but he flexes that hip up 
as he rotates the thoracic spine. He actually doesn't even rotate the thoracic spine as much. Uh, generally, you're trying to get your head around really quick so you can see the target. He doesn't do that here. As he abducts the hip and extends the hip with the glute med and the glute max respectively, he uh, extends the knee with the quad and gets that really good hip extension follow through right there. He's actually not crunching as much, but you can see these hamstrings and the adductors are doing a really, really good job at stabilizing him with the foot that's planted on the ground in the closed chain. All right, so one more time, I'm gonna let you watch it full speed. Turn, good follow through. Spinning kicks in general require a lot of coordination and can be super powerful. So make sure you let me know in the comments if you want me to cover other kicks. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.